Let's continue with the conversation. You've heard a legal opinion, but let's get to hear uh, from those who have um, administered state resources in the past. We are now being joined by a former Minister of, uh, state for, uh, Minister of Water Resources under the Obasanjo administration and served as the Deputy Governor of Sokoto State from 2007 to 2015. He is a lawyer and a former Sokoto State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice. Mr. Mukhtar Shagiri joins us from his residence in Abuja. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. Give us a sense of what this judge, uh, today's decision of the Supreme Court means to you. Yeah. Well, um, uh, uh, first of all, let's, let's start this way. You know, there's no way democracy can thrive and be successful anywhere in the world unless you have independence of the judiciary and you have independence of the legislature. That is what makes democracy thick, because you have to have strong institutions. And the institutions that have been strong for things to work are the judiciary and the legislature. That is why I believe it's very important that the judiciary must have independence from the states. They must have their own funds, they must have their own money, they must run their own affairs. They should not go cap in hand, asking for money from the executives. But be it that as it may, uh, today a judgment has been made by the Supreme Court, a ruling, which has told us that no, uh, what the president did by issuing executive order number 10 is completely against the constitution of Nigeria. The Federal Minister of Justice has come out to say, well, look, he has these powers to do that under Section 12, Subsection 3, and then Section 5 of the Constitution of Nigeria. But we have to understand that it's the judiciary that has the responsibility to interpret our laws. The judiciary today has interpreted the law and said, look, uh, the president issued a wrong order and that federal government, whether through the attorney, accounting general or any other institution, cannot deduct money from the state funds and give to to, I mean, to judicial, whatever it is. I think for me, it is, it is a bit disturbing. It is a bit disturbing in the sense that we are not looking at this very important institution to which every Nigerian look up to for protection and so on, because it's a judiciary that will, that will actually protect the poor man, that can also protect the rich man, and that can ensure that we have law and order in our country. I feel very strongly that the judiciary, whatever it is, whatever happens there, must be free and independent to pass judgments, whether against the government or against any individuals. But it's so unfortunate that some of our governors believe that once they are there in power, they must control everything, including the judiciary. And I believe it is simply wrong. But you see, the laws of this country passed by the legislature uh, don't have life. It is us, the human beings, that put life to them. So even with the judgment of the Supreme Court, I believe that the state governments can still do something to make the judiciary feel independent and to make them feel fearless so that they can pass judgments without fear or favor against any other person in the country. The issue is about us. The issue is about the people that are running the affairs of this country. If I have the opportunity, to run the affairs of this country, I believe the judiciary will be free and will be able to decide their responsibilities as they should. The judiciary, the judges, must not be going to the, to the, to the governors or federal government to be looking for money to go for medical checkups and the rest of it. They don't have to be looking for money to buy cars. They don't have to look for money to be looking for typewriters and other things and so on and so forth. We must, and it has to be done one day. Somehow, the judiciary must be independent. It must be able to just tell responsibilities to Nigerians, to Nigeria, as it should be. All right, we reckon with your experience and your background as a lawyer, uh, Commissioner for Justice, Attorney General of the State, and a former Deputy Governor who served two terms in his state. And so the reason why we wanted to invite you or speak to you tonight to glean from your experience and what you have encountered. Let me put it to you because Prof. said, blame some of the governors for some of the anomaly that we see in not allowing the legislature and the judiciary do their jobs in the state. For you, 
What is the biggest anomaly that you saw while in office that makes the work of the judiciary and the legislature at the state level a joke? Yeah, well, um, first of all, let me put it this way. I had the opportunity to advise two governments on issues relating to justice and so on. When I worked as the Attorney General, I made it very clear to my, to my governor, then they, have been called, they were called administrators, that we will not interfere in the way the judiciary discharge their responsibilities. And if we have a reason to do anything, we must do it properly in accordance with the laws of this country. So throughout that period that I served as, a, as, as Attorney General, we did not interfere with the way the judiciary runs, run, run well, of course, its own affairs. We did not hold any funds that is supposed to go to the judiciary. We gave them. When I served as deputy governor of Sokoto State, I noticed that once in a while, the chief judge will come to the government house. The grand card will come to the government house and advise my governor, no, that's not the way it should be. Uh, we have a responsibility to make these people feel comfortable, give them whatever they need without interfering in their own affairs. I can assure you and tell you that throughout that period, we never interfered with the judiciary. And I feel that it is wrong for a chief judge you know, to be allowed to go to government house, you know, cap in hand to beg for money, either to go for, for courses or to go for conferences or to go for, 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 for medical checkup and the rest of it and so on and so forth. I think the anomaly is that uh, we, the operators of the law, we feel that once you are the chief executive of the state, you are alpha and omega, and that the judiciary is under you, the legislature is under you, everyone else is right. under you. I think we must take that. L let me, that let me, let me get a follow-up on, on the question I asked. So because I wanted to know what some of the problems are so that we can prefer solutions to them. So in this sense, let's first and foremost know, the monies that go to the judiciary and legislature, are these monies first line charge? Yes, uh, you see, actually, once the money gets to the states into their account, they control this money. But the issue is there was an order, executive order, which was signed by, by, by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in its effort to make sure that the judiciary is separated from, 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 from the executive. But the problem is that those who operate this, most of them don't want to do it because they feel they must control the judiciary. I know in Sokoto State, the governor presently now, I mean, it was Lily Tumbwell, who is a lawyer and also a legislator, who was also a former speaker of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He gives the judiciary their own money and he does not interfere. And this is the way all governors should behave. Make the judiciary feel independent, feel free, and have the latitude to be able to pass judgments without interference from anybody and without the fear that they will be well, in fact, victimized. I think, I think that the federal government should go back to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court to look at this judgment today and change it. Our judiciary must be independent. Our judiciary must have the latitude to be able to pass judgments without fear or favor. Our judiciary must not go to the, to the chief executive of any state to look for money. They must have their own money and they must run their own affairs. So that is the bottom line. Your Excellency, if I may quickly come in again, it does look like what the Supreme Court did today, from our own point of view, is that it sent everyone back to what the Constitution says. And it says, look, just go back to what the Constitution yeah. as it is. So the question is, even when you go back to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will still say, this is what the Constitution uh, states and says, except if something drastic is changed in our laws as it is right now. It then means that we need to tinker with the letters of the Constitution. And how do we go about it? Because what I, so if you look at what the Attorney General says in defense of the Order 10, is that they want the independence of the judiciary. But the Supreme Court says, look, that is out of your powers. You cannot do that. So how do we achieve that independence? Which some people were saying, look, is some kind of restructuring. Well, well um, you see, the, 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 the issue is this. The Constitution of Nigeria was drafted by human beings. And human beings are expected to make decisions that may not be right. A law 
is organic. A law, you know, can always change depending on the circumstances. I feel that the constitution must be amended to make it so clear, to make it so clear that the judiciary must be funded independent of either the federal government or independent of the state government. Uh, I actually believe that the, 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 the Supreme Court made a judgment based on what they think the interpretation of the law should be. Nobody is blaming the Supreme Court, but we feel that for us to have an independent judiciary where the rule of law will be the order of the day, the constitution of this country must be amended to make it so clear to everybody that this is where it stands as far as the funding of judiciary is concerned. Restructuring is very important, but what is restructuring? Once you do the right things, nobody will ask you for restructuring. People are asking for restructuring now because they believe that so many things are wrong. The constitution we have was not given to us by the Nigerian people. It was given to us by the, by the military. The military gathered some people and they debated, they discussed and so on, came up with a document which was given to the, to, the, to the military administration at that time and they decided that this should be the constitution of Nigeria. So let's look at our constitution holistically. Let us, let, us, let us be on the side of the people, not on the side of the executive, on the side of any big man in this country and do things that can make this country work and do things that can make democracy in this country work and do things that can create strong institutions, the judiciary, the legislator, and the rest of it. People have not been talking about legislator at the state level. They are not different from what is happening in the judiciary because every legislator today in this country is at the mercy of the chief executive of the state. This is very well known. So I think we should look at our constitution and look at it holistically without fear or favor, without thinking of my own zone, without thinking of my own state, without thinking of my tribe, without thinking of my religion, and do things that can make Nigeria great. And you cannot have great democracy. You cannot have great country as long as you don't have strong institutions and strong institutions that are working. So I'd like to put this question, as difficult as it may for you, uh, Professor Ujuku said, that the governors are the problems. Is it true? Well, um, I actually wouldn't say the governors are. We are all the problem. The problems in Nigeria cannot just be given to just one person. Cannot be said it's about one person. It is about all of us. If we refuse to do the wrong things, the wrong things will go away. If the leadership just continuously do the wrong things, people will believe that doing the wrong thing is the right thing. So it is about all of us. And I would want to also call on the governors. They should also help to make this country and our democracy strong and better. Those governors that are treating their judiciary in the best way they should be treated, we congratulate them. Those that are not doing it, they should learn from those that are doing it. So in this sense, uh, what is your biggest fear uh, for those who believe that if you go to, to some of the courts uh, in the state against uh, the government, because the essence of going to court or the judiciary adjudicating in matters is when you have uh, issues against the government or you have issues against another person or government against government. But in this case, with the manner in which the courts and the legislature in the state are being run, the fear that people had, the federal government had this fear and, uh, and made the other 10, can you say that an average citizen can get justice? Yes, I believe that an average person can get justice if you have a strong judge, because the judges themselves also have to be fearless. They have to stand their ground. They have to carry out their own So that's the question, that if the, if the judges don't yeah. have the right environment and the right infrastructure, and they are not independent in their mind and in the, in, uh, in the, in the monies that come into their pocket, uh, how then can they adjudicate properly when they have some people breathing over their necks. They are not independent. And that's why I'm asking the question, can you say that an average Nigerian can get justice in states where supposedly, allegedly, the governors have overbearing powers over the, over the courts? 
Well, you see, uh, this is the problem. And this is why I say that the chief executives of the states must not, for any reason, interfere with the way the judiciary runs its own affairs. Every chief executive in any state swore with the Quran or swore with the Bible that he will, he will uphold the laws of this country. Upholding the laws of this country includes respecting the independence of the judiciary, whether you give them money or you don't give them money. And we should also understand that those of us who are in governance, who are in politics and so on, being a governor is a temporary thing. The maximum time you can stay as a governor is eight years. And if you're a legislator, the maximum time you can stay maybe, unless you are voted again, is actually about four years. So I think that we should look at the issues that are militating against the development and progress of this country, the issues that are actually making it so difficult for the ordinary person to even have confidence in the judiciary and do away with them. If you are a governor, you must know that you are governing people. And you must know that once there's a dispute between you and any individual in your state, that individual has a place he can go and seek for his right. And that must not be stopped. But I want to also say that the judiciary must be strong, whether there is funding or no funding. They too, they've sworn to uphold the laws of this country, so they must not fear that if I do not do this, this will not happen or that will not happen. Once you put that in your mind, then you cannot go anywhere. Then you cannot pass sound judgment. I have absolute confidence in the judiciary of this country in so many decisions that, be, that have taken place, both at the state level, both at the appeal court, and also the Supreme Court. And I think the decision today also has shown that the Supreme Court does not care whether it is against the judiciary, it's against the government, it's against the individual. What they do is they do their job of interpreting the law. They've interpreted the law today, and they are telling us that, well, if you are not satisfied with that, look at your constitution and do something about it. But independence of judiciary is key to good governance. It's key to development. All right. It's also so key let to me, let me, for someone who has served like in the temple of justice, you have also been an attorney general, yeah. and you have served in the executive. So you have a somewhat an overview, a bird's eye view of the situation of things. If you are to be in a situation to fix the problem of the independence of the legislature mm -hmm. and the judiciary, what is that one thing that you will do? What I will do is I will tell the chief judge of the state, you have the freedom to do your duty and pass judgment and carry out your responsibilities without the fear that I'll interfere because I will not. I will also tell the legislature that you, look, you are elected by the people. I am also elected by the people for us to work for them. I will, you will do your duty uh, responsibly and I will do my duty responsibly and I will not interfere with what you will do. But you have to understand that you are voted into power because you told people what you are going to do if you become a legislator. And the issue is that we all have to work together to make things work without interfering in the way each one of us does his own thing. So for me, if I have the opportunity, the, 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 the judiciary in my state will be totally independent. The legislator in my state will be totally right. independent. So this is how I would like us to, to end them, the conversation we'll to tonight, court. Your Excellency. And I'd like to ask you, mm. is the legislature and the judiciary in our states today, are they subservient to the governors or the executive? No, come again, please. I didn't get the question. I'm asking the question. Uh, it does look like an obvious one, but I wanted to get the right uh, uh, perspective from you. I, I'm asking, are the legislature and judiciary in the 36 states of the Federation under the executive, are they subservient to the executive arm of government? Well, now I cannot tell you that because I'm not in the executive. I'm also in the judiciary, but... What I know is what I know about my state because I interact with the governor, I also interact with the chief judge and the rest of them and so on. In Sokoto State, for example, I know that the judiciary is totally independent. And I know that the legislature also is independent, but they work together with the state executive to make sure they deliver the democracy dividends that the people of Sokoto State 
are also well part expected. What happens in other states, I All don't right. know. But I've made this point very clear, and I want to make it very clear. The independence of judiciary, the independence of the legislature, are extremely very important for our democracy to grow, and for this nation also to grow. Your Excellency, Mukta Shagari, former Deputy Governor of Sokoto State and former Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice in Sokoto State. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. And that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you again 8 p.m. on Sunday, right here on China's television. It's bye for now.